Okay guys, welcome back to the basswood carving videos and we're gonna today this is part two of uh, the uh, lipless crankbait carving wood carving the lipless crankbait and uh, Today we're gonna paint it. So this is part two if you haven't seen part one go back and uh, watch the video where we made this lure and um, You can get started right away making it Okay, so today we're gonna paint we're gonna do a little airbrushing and I'm using uh, Createx Opaque White. Okay, we're going to put a base coat on first. And then we're going to uh, come back with a Pearl White. That's Wicked Colors. Wicked Pearl White. And then we're going to come on top of that with a Pearlized Black. Createx Pearlized Black. And then we're going to add some spots. Uh, in the black too as well so we're gonna make kind of a crappie pattern all right so first thing we're gonna do is paint on a base coat and uh, let that we're gonna air dry that a little bit with the air dryer with the hair dryer I'm sorry okay this is gonna take a few coats so we, uh, we want to get a nice base coat on here so our colors stand out real nice. That pearl stands out real nice. I'm shooting at about uh, 25 to 30 PSI. Like I said, we want to get a nice white base coat. And that wood's going to suck a lot of this paint up. So it's going to take a few coats to get her, get them all covered up. Okay, we're gonna hit that with a blow dryer.
coat. And then we're going to put on the pearl white. Okay, we want to get this bottom covered up real good so you don't see those lead marks. Okay, next color we're going to do is the pearl white. starting to get a little shiny pearlescence to it. And if we put the epoxy on it, you'll see all these colors come out. See a little roughness there from the sanding, but once we put the texture, the cover, uh, the cover spots on there, It'll cover pretty good, you won't hardly even see it. And that's the thing with being wood. As soon as you hit it with paint, you're going to start seeing the grains come out. That's cool. The fish don't care. They'll bite it anyway. Thick. Okay, we'll give that a few minutes to dry. We'll hit it at the air dryer off camera. 
Okay, next color. I failed to tell you we were putting on pearlized silver. I left out one of the colors, but we're going to put on some pearl silver next after our pearl white. And as you can see, that really, after it dried up pretty good, that pearl white's really popping out there. Okay, um, so next color, pearl silver. And we're just going to run that down. going to kind of run that down the back and the shoulders a little bit just to get a little variation in the white to the silver I just want that silver to kind of fall down the sides not a real noticeable difference between the white and the silver. I mean the fact that once the epoxy's on it, you'll really be able to see the differences. So I'll give you a good coat. And down my shoulders. Around his eyes. A little bit on the chin. see it on camera I know but uh, it's there give that a little quick heat set okay now for the spots we're going to use this little stencil that I got and uh, we're going to just kind of give it some light little spots in black and turn my pressure down I don't want to blow a bunch of spots and make them run. So, just want my pressure down real low, about 15. And I'm going to extend these spots. And I don't even have to have them solid. Just that little bit of variation. So nice. See how it kind of blends down to the bottom, and then on the back, I'm going to run a dark stripe, so I'm not too worried about that top. All right, turn this nude around and get the other side. And I got to make sure that my uh, stencil's dry. Here, I'm going to turn it over so I kind of get the same little bit of pattern, but it isn't, it isn't going to hurt nothing if it's a little different. No big deal at all. Holding it flat. spots just like so all right now I'm gonna take the black and I'm come down the back real nice dark black back kind of 
and spot wind right into the back. Okay, I'm gonna give him a black shadow around the eye. Black shadow around this eye. Run them shoulders in to the spots. And a little black nose. And come under the bottom. And give it just a shade, shadow of black. Guaranteed to catch a big one, Jeff. All right. We'll put the eyes on it. We'll put the eyes on it here in a second. Let me dry it up real good. And um, then we'll go on to the epoxy. And to make sure I got you, got you a good camera view. I think I was going off camera a little bit. Pad out of the way. Okay, so there it is. It's just my little version of a crappie. Black crappie. Black male crappie, actually. Alright, and watch how those colors pop out once we get that epoxy on there. Alright, so we'll, next step, we'll put the eyes on and we'll get the epoxy on it. Alright, for eyes... I've chosen these little silver and black, kind of iridescent. They change colors in the different lights. Um, I think these are going to go good. Choosing eyes is always the hard part because I got so many good kinds of eyes and I never can make up my mind. But this one, we're going to go with these little silver, silver and black because I think they complement the colors, the paint colors that we got on here. So a little dab of super glue. Drop that dude in there and I got it to match my Forstner bit. And I got this little burnisher tool because I, I found that if I handle it, touch it and push on it with my fingers, it makes the eye cloudy. So this little burnisher tool is pretty good. Um, now the eyes have a sticky back on them already, but um, I like to seal it in real good with the super glue just around there. So once I put the epoxy on, you're not going to see the super glue anyway, and it dries clear. Um, but putting on the eyes is always the, the final step to making it almost look finished. Once you get the epoxy on there, man, it really looks good. I got a little extra super glue on there than I wanted. And usually you can take a little paper towel or cloth and dab that off of there. Okay, I'll give us a second to dry and then we'll flip it over. But you guys let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more of these lures. I'm creating them. Um, doing a bunch of hand carved lures and basswood. And I'm going to do some balsas and do some with um, little rattles in them and everything. So if you'd like to see more of these hand carved ones on the channel, um, let me know in the comments. And I mean, I'm doing them anyway, so I'll go ahead and film them. Um, try to give everybody a variety of things that they'd like to carve or that I like to carve anyway um, you know that's what I, I think I try to make unique about my channel is that I try to do 
Oh, got a little speck of doo-doo do in there. Um, I try to do different things and keep give you kind of a variety of things. So if you like doing doing these fishing lures, like I said, I'll create a playlist. And if you don't like watching the fishing lures, you don't have to. But there'll still be other carvings on here on the channel. But they're kind of fun. It's kind of neat to make a lure and take it out and go fishing with it. And, uh, and there's a little bit of an expense involved in getting your airbrush and everything. Um, I'm using the, the set that's on Amazon that was like $139, $149, something like that. I can put a link in the description if, if you're interested. Um, it's it's a little costly when you get into the paints because there's so many different kinds of paints um, and then you can buy blanks blank lures already carved or you can actually buy plastic ones and that are pretty decent on Amazon so if you're looking to get into that um, I definitely suggest you go check out Krusty Cranks because I'm getting ready to start putting a bunch of my painting videos up on there because uh, even car carving and paint lures has become a big hobby for me and I really enjoy it. And it's a lot of fun and it's kind of neat creating your own patterns and trying to match other patterns. Um, you know, when it comes to matching certain types of fish. But there we go, we got the eyes on there. I didn't put as much super glue on that one, so it was a little bit, a little easier. But uh, let me let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this, and also don't forget to check out my community. Um, I'll put a link into that as well. Always go to the description because I always put links to different stuff in there, whether it's stuff I've used in the videos or stuff that um, stuff that I think is of interest to you, and. Um, you know the channel might make a little bit off of it we haven't made any money you know um but we are selling the the project book so if you haven't checked out the uh wood carving project book those are selling really good so go back and check those out and i think uh, i think that'll interest you especially if you want to write down a bunch of projects that you want to do or projects that you got in mind of doing so go back and check out that video like i said that that uh was something I created for myself pretty much when I thought hey other carvers might be interested in having one too so um, we put it up on Amazon and um, yeah you might like it so all right let's go epoxy this dude all right back here in the epoxy room in the finishing room so what I'm using here is called solar res and it's a clear non-yellowing formula it's a dual cure polyester resin and this stuff just makes some amazing coating on the baits and it's also UV so it's kind of quick if I if I want to be fast about it I can um, basically put two coats on in a couple hours um, which is instead of waiting for 24 hours for it to dry um, so it's called solar res and it's a it's um Two coats puts a nice hard epoxy on it to protect it from when you're casting it, throwing it out, banging it on trees and rocks and stuff. Um, so what I do is I take the lure and I put it on a paper clip like that. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this dude down in there. And I'm going to pretty much submerge him completely down in there. Pull him up. Let him drip a little bit. Sticking back down in there one more time just to make sure I got a good got everything coated And I'm going to hang here for a second and let this most of the excess run off And it really provides a nice smooth uh, Finish once it once it cures um, and I'll show you the curing process um, Creates a really nice hard coating on this bait I really like this stuff. Plus, it's not an A, B. I don't have to mix any chemicals together, A's and B's, hardeners or anything like that. Um, it's made for, like, boats and outdoor stuff. So, um, you know, if, if it's uh, made for boats, it's going to be good for a lure. Um, 
you can also brush it on um, if I wanted to I can use a brush and brush it on but I found out this way I don't get no brush strokes um, the only trouble is sometimes it'll drip a little bit on the end um, that's why I hang it like this if it trips down on the end I can take a little Dremel tool and clean out the clean out the uh, the hook hanger and um, it's fine works fine but it really creates a nice smooth finish as you can see all right then over here let me see if I can spin the camera around drip box to catch all my drips so I'm gonna hang this guy up there and he's gonna sit for about 20 minutes and get all the excess drippage off and then I'm gonna show you what I do with it from there so I hang him up Just going to let him hang and drip right there for a little bit. And then what I can also do is come in and take this little brush and just catch that drip and drip, wipe it off. And get these little brushes at Walmart for like about 60 of them in a pack or 30 of them in a package for like a couple bucks but look at the finish on that it's hard to tell on camera somewhat I'm sure but man it's really really nice and by the time I dip it again after I harden it and dip it again I usually put the hook hangers on it and or put the hooks on it split rings hooks and it's ready to fish I mean I could fish with this thing tonight by the time I get done with it so really like it it's called solar res got it on Amazon so if you're looking for something with a nice UV cure you can put it out in the Sun um, and the Sun says it says it cures in three minutes when exposed to sunlight but what I found is by putting them outside, I did a I did a couple lures and put them outside, and they got a bunch of pollen and dust in them. So that's why I like to do this way that I'm getting ready to do. So let's let that hang for a little bit, and then I'll take you through the drying process. Okay, so here's my little UV box. What I do is it's it's called a Sun Lu. And I think I picked it up for like 99 bucks on Amazon. Um, but it's a UV curing box. So I clip my uh, lure onto this little block of wood with the alligator clip. And sit it in here. And it's going to rotate around in circles. I'll show you. I'll show you. Okay, it's going to turn off when I bring the door down. We'll push the button. So it basically rotates in there. And I do 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Uh, my timer only goes to like 10 minutes. So I got to do uh, three times. 30 minutes. And then I'll pull this out. Dip it again. And do it another 30 minutes. And then pretty much I'm ready to go. It's, it's hardened. It's nice and hardened. So um, that's my process. And um, I appreciate you guys following the channel. And I hope I can bring you more good content. Let me know if you want to see some more of these fishing video, fishing lure videos. And um, I'll definitely put them on the channel. I've got a lot of different types of lures I'm going to be doing. So I thought, well, if I put them on the channel, people might be interested in, in learning how to carve them. So I um, appreciate you watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click that notification bell so you get a notification when we... Uh, Put up a new video and um, don't forget to check out our com my community i'll put a link all links will be in the description okay here's our finished lure 
Uh, I'm going to package it up and get it ready to ship out to Jeff Rowe. Um, I would fish with it, go out and throw it in the lake a little bit, but since this is going to Jeff, I'm not going to get it wet and banged up or lose it. So there's our finished lure. You can see a nice shine on it. You can see how the silver's go into the pearl white. Looking really nice. Hook's all on it. It's ready to fish. So Jeff, if you catch something with it, let me know. Send me a pic. I'd really be appreciative of that if you did. But um, yeah, so there's the finished lure. Um, the one thing I will say is like when you uh, do put that finish on it, try to let it hang for a day if you can. And that way when you go to put your hooks on it, it's it's um, you're not going to get a bunch of fingerprints in it and everything. So there's the finished lure. Packaging it up. Send to Jeff at Jeff Row Carves. And I appreciate everybody watching the channel. Subscribers keep going up. And I'm really happy with what's going on. Um, so... Stay tuned for the next video coming up.